All right, welcome into another episode of Red, the Red Out Podcast. I am one half of your hosting duo, Jake. How you doing, Devin? I'm doing good. It's good to be back again this week. So do you want to start us off with some other sports the, uh, besides the revenues? A lot of news here. Ones? Oh, yeah, of course. We've got a lot of news going this week in uh, WKU and around the world. It uh, looks like we've got England Lucas earning Conference USA Weekly Awards again. Uh, the duo is doing pretty good for our lady volleyball team. And I think Seriously. they're undefeated, aren't they? Uh, they're at least in conference. I just don't know how we're not. No, I think we, we dropped one to uh, maybe Louisville earlier in the year. But anyways, I don't know how we're not ranking the top 25. It's killing me. Yeah, but we're we're doing really good. Ladies are ladies are doing really good this year. Um, Got to give them props there. I Looks mean, we're a like volleyball our, school, right? Uh, basketball team has started practice. Uh, that, yeah, apparently, uh, men's basketball started uh, on Tuesday. Uh, Coach Dan Barry's getting under his second season. Hopefully, we're going to get the ball rolling. Uh, we're going to be without Mitchell Robinson this year, but you know Ooh. what? I think the guys are going to do well, and we'll uh, we'll be good enough for it. Yeah, for sure. So speaking of basketball, we're talking about recruiting. Uh, I really like recruiting. I, and other ranking things to get obsessed with and lists to follow and 17-year-olds to read about way too much. A guy named uh, Carlos Curry visited Western over the weekend. Now he's a 6'11", jeez, 220-pound senior uh, from Al- Albany, Georgia. And he's got offers from Florida State, MTSU, K-State, Kennesaw State, Illinois, among some other ones. Uh, I was just looking at his recruiting file on 247. Shout out to those guys. That's my favorite recruiting site because most of their stuff is free. Uh, it says that he's pretty warm on Florida State. Uh, he also has some interest in Clemson and Oklahoma. He actually visited Oklahoma or received a visit from an Oklahoma coach just recently. He was also at Western uh, during the Ball State game. So hopefully he had a good time. Stansbury's known as a master recruiter, so we'll see where he goes from that. Also on the recruiting channel, but switching to the football side, uh, one of the things we talked about with Stanford, you know, though I am not completely sold on the play style yet, I am sold on the way he recruits kids, especially from the deep south, from Florida and Georgia. The Peach State is becoming uh, our new stomping ground. We just today, as we're recording this podcast, Western got a commit from a 6'3", 220 pound uh, defensive end out of Georgia. His name is Roderick Forts. He's got some pretty decent offers from Colorado State and. Uh, some not so decent ones like FAU among others but I was trying to watch some of his tape now I am not by any means uh, analytics expert uh, the dude doesn't look that explosive but he's not that big you know 220 I don't I don't know how big uh, defensive ends are supposed to be I thought they were supposed to be closer to like 250 so we'll see how explosive he is but uh, we can always use more help on the defensive side of the ball and speaking of recruiting just to talk about some rankings for a minute this may end up being the best recruiting class that Western's had since we uh, started playing in the FBS. If you look right now, according to 247 Sports, Western's football recruiting ranking for 2018 sits at 65th in the nation, which is one of the highest we've ever had. If you look at the webpage and and see who's around, we're beating out teams like SMU, Kansas, Colorado State, uh, some bigger names like Arizona, and Boise State, even Kansas State and Stanford are uh, under Western in football recruiting as it stands right now, which is pretty sweet. And not to mention, we're number one in Conference USA right now by a wide margin, which is pretty intense. You gotta love it when we get these big time recruits. You gotta love it when we get these big recruits. And uh, I know you said the kid was only about 220, but. That's that's still uh, a good foundation for well, our uh, strength coaches to build upon and or 18, to so. see these guys uh, get a lot bigger and well by the time he comes to Western I'm sure they'll they'll throw it to him he may have to redshirt a year you know whatever that's all part of it but and the bad part about football commits are that they can still decommit and go somewhere else so as exciting a news as it is you know you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt this is true. Um, now, now a lot of, uh, people are interested in the, uh, L scandal <laughs> update. Looks like, uh, both Tommy, 
Tom Jurich and Ricky Rick uh, Patino are both on uh, – Tom, uh, Tom Jurich is on paid and, unpa- and Rick's on unpaid leave until the uh, uh, board of trustees at UofL meets. Uh, Jake, do you want to go ahead and take this? Yeah, so... You being a U of L alum, it probably... Uh, it, it irks me A little me better to, for you to take it. Well, it irks me to no end that the school that I got my law degree from is such a crap show right now. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the interim president, Greg Postal, and how he's handling this stuff and how the board's doing. Uh, so recently, you know, everybody's aware if you've had a your eyes open to any sports the last, you know, week or so that UofL's got a huge uh, pay-for-play scandal going along with several other schools, but UofL being the number one basketball school in that has been named so far, uh, they're getting the most press, and they're still under investigation for, you know, the hooker and stripper scandal, so that's always fun. Who doesn't love money, hookers, and strippers? But uh, as it stands right now, Tom Jurich has been put on uh, paid administrative leave, and Rick is on unpaid. The reason and the difference uh, of paid versus unpaid isn't necessarily how the board feels about them. It's actually just because their contracts are controlled by different institutions or different parts of the university. Uh, Tom Jurich is actually a, a vice president, so he his stuff is controlled by the actual academic side of the university, which may seem odd for the AD. And then, you know, Rick's is just controlled by the athletics, and his contract's not as favorable as Tom Jurich's. Uh, I will say that there are a lot of rumors right now. If you if you if you follow, well, Andy, I mean that's. Go ahead. Uh, Rick does have a fair. I mean, you can't <laughs> you can't not have a favorable contract when your contract says that you have uh, you have to have ten days notice for getting fired with cause. Well, to be honest I mean, that's with you, favorable. <laughs> if you look at well, I mean, compared to, compared to like my and your contracts, I... right? But if you look at like big coaching contracts and, and, and large, you know, corporate guys' contracts uh, nationwide. The 10 days with cause is... I mean, we've got pretty good contracts. The 10 days with cause is pretty... We've got good contracts uh, with WKU Red Out, so I mean... <laughs> I know, right? That we just do it. Uh, but but that 10 days, that, that's pretty common. <laughs> I will say that uh, he is fighting it tooth and nail and so much for L1C4 kind of a joke at this point since he's suing an already broke university for 44 mil when he has you know a mansion in miami but i can tell you straight up right now there are rumors that jurich is going to be retained as as ad because guys like jim patterson who was the the named uh booster who built the who helped build the uh baseball stadium baseball field he's come in on jurich's side all the money is coming in for Tom Jurich, which makes sense. He's cultivated those relationships for like 20 years. But I can tell you that everything that I hear on, you know, on the fan level and on the board level and the presidential level, nobody wants to be anywhere near Jurich. And I, I just, I don't, I don't see him coming back. No, and and good. He doesn't yeah, need to. Um, I was last, yeah, last week. I, I agree with you. Um, last week I was like 90 percent. 99% sure Jurich wasn't coming back. And now, from the rumors I've heard, you know, I'm more like 80, 85% sure that Jurich isn't coming back. Right, right. So, <laughs> kind of like, um, you know, for the university, and I'm sure President Postal, um, great name by the way, would uh, love to get rid of Jurich, but I just don't know with the um, with the donor, with the boosters and such, if they would. I mean, they should, but... Again, I'm I'm not in the rooms with them. I don't know what they're talking about. Well, but. that's true. Nobody is. The, when they talk about it, they're in executive closed sessions. But the, the, the scuttlebutt is that not only does the president, but the entire board acts un, has acted unanimously in putting them on leave, and, and they're all on the same page. Uh, you know, not as terrible notes, right? So UofL did actually name their interim people, so the basketball uh basketball and sports can continue they named david pageant as the interim coach and their interim ad is vince tira i don't know a lot about tira yet I, i've been out i have been uh kind of out of touch with you all news the last couple days um the ba- basically what i've gotten from vince tira is that he uh was an athlete at uh university of kentucky he was um, played basketball. so he, so he yeah so he has athletics on his side so he understands where the guys are coming from 
Um, and he's a local businessman, which I don't know necessarily what business he is in, but he was um, with Fruit of the Loom for a while. He was a Russell guy. Okay. Okay. So we'll understand if they get a Russell contract in the near future. Right? Well, I mean, if Adidas <laughs> so, and Nike go down, Russell will rise from the ashes. There we go. Uh, of course, Russell's a good. Russell's good. I mean, there's I can, I can't complain each company about has Russell. their thing. They were oh, good to Western. They were very good to Western. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, it wasn't 160 million over 10 years, but you know, it was still good. Yeah. Right. Um, we still and, have uh, Well, with me. And I don't know how you feel on this, but with Rick suing the university for breach of contract. Oh, it's it's, it's trash. I just uh, don't feel like he's got any ground. Oh, well, uh, it depends. I, I can't say because I haven't seen... I don't know if they filed the complaint yet, and I haven't read it. And not only that, but I actually... I, I have no idea what information the FBI has. If he is... He's, he's coached, dude. Let's just cut the crap. He's coached, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I will say that from an evidentiary standpoint, proving Diddy is, even at a preponderance of the evidence level, which is what I would assume you would need in civil court to prove that you would fire him with cause, for all the non-law nerds that may be listening, preponderance of the evidence is just more likely than not. It's less than the criminal standard of beyond a reasonable doubt. And I'm not sure they're going to have evidence enough. They might have, you know, NCAA might have enough evidence. I'm just not sure that civilly they can prove that what the guy who's uh, Jordan Fair, we all assume, Coach 1, is saying about Coach 2 is accurate because it's going to be that one gentleman's testimony against... That one gentleman's testimony will have to be a preponderance of the evidence, and that's not usually good enough. Just one guy trying to save his own skin. And that's how I would imagine Rick's attorney's gonna gonna paint it. It's like, of course he's saying that Coach Two had all is he's talking about all this stuff because otherwise he's in trouble. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he gets the forty four. I don't. I don't think they'll. Well, they may I not, mean, not going to the, court. I don't know. Yeah, I imagine they'll probably try and settle out of court, or it's going to hit the fan in such a way that Rick's just going to have to just give. He's just going to have to give in and say, okay, you know, I've, I'm just going to drop the suit, and it'll eventually just blow away. Um, but it's a classless move. Regardless. I actually heard a guy on the radio the other day. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole time he's been bringing up bull. I mean, the last time, the last scandal I think they broke was like what ten years after nine eleven or something, and he brought that up at the press conference. I was like, really, dude? Well, the reason he brought you it up really is need to bring his, that up. <laughs> the reason that he did yes, is, is his, his brother, brother died, 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 died in the towers. So, yeah, but the same building that his that's named for him is the root is the building where the hookers were so yeah yeah it just does not look good that's... um i actually heard something on the radio the other day and it's probably one of the funniest things i've ever heard was that rick was running the long con okay yeah, right now everybody try and follow this um okay rick patino coaching at uk decided that he was going to take care of L. so he leaves comes back to the University of Louisville, coaches the University of Louisville for how many ever years it was he was there. 16. He even goes as far to win the national championship, but does it in such a way that they get it taken away. <laughs> Ten full hats abound. Yeah, yes. And he, uh... <laughs> and I mean, even, I mean, the worst part is, and the ironic part is, is that when he came to Kentucky, he had to rebuild the University of Kentucky because they had just come off scandal. Yep. Now, with him leaving, it's going to be the same thing. He's leaving the University of um, Louisville in the same situation that he, he came into Kentucky. Yep. Irony bad, abounds. <laughs> it's so bad. But what are you going to do? Hire somebody else and move on. Exactly. And I hope the University of Louisville can... Uh, continue to grow and do well under their new coaching leadership and maybe i mean i don't know if this uh if tire uh, ad vince tire is going to do uh if he's going to be permanent or if he's just going to be interim but we'll just hope that he does a good job and you know go from there yep all right so western versus utip um Oh my gosh, the bye week was the worst, man. Yeah, it was boring. Was it not? It was very boring. Uh, Saturday with no football. Well, 
Not I mean, good I football, watched, anyway. I watched some football, um, but it was just like, meh. But who cares, you know? It's kind of like, yeah, it's meh. Like, I don't have a rooting You know, I, Yeah, I mean, whenever I watch a game like that, I'm like, I'll just watch, I'll go for so-and-so. Yeah, And that's exactly. like, yay. <laughs> Who's the favorite? Let's not pick them. Yeah. So, uh, I think the biggest story that this week with this game is that uh, UTEP's coach, Sean Kugler, stepped down on Sunday. Did, did he um, resign, or did they fire him? I, I, just, I, didn't, I couldn't remember. I've, I've heard that he resigned. Okay. It was one of those now, things his like, his record, hey. no, it wasn't like, I, I don't, from what I've seen, it wasn't, uh, you know, either you resign or we're going to fire you. Oh, okay. Um, but they've got a uh, 71-year-old retired Mike Price stepping back in. Um, for those of you who may know his name, he was the coach of Alabama back in 2003. Um, he, he never actually coached a game at Alabama because <laughs> there was a huge scandal uh, with a nightclub party uh, at a strip club in Pensacola, Ooh. Florida. And so uh, he actually never got to coach a game for the Crimson Tide. But then there soon after, he moved to uh, UTEP and they picked him up. And his record there, I mean, he was amazing. From what I saw, he was uh, uh, forty-eight and sixty-one, which that's not great, but it's still okay, so better let's, than. Let's let, then let's trail back the amazing. <laughs> he's he's I, okay. He's, yeah, he had a losing I, record. Yeah, I forgot the numbers. Okay, it's okay. Uh, he was uh, he's forty-eight and sixty-one non-conference, thirty and forty-two conference USA, but that's amazing compared to Sean Kugler, who yeah, was eighteen of thirty-six yeah, and eleven for twenty-two. So that really? dude's batting like what, a third? Yeah, I'll, he wins know. one out of three games. <laughs> I went to I went to law school, not to math school. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, he's he's winning like one out of three games. Thirty three total games, Conference USA. He won eleven. So That's so bad. But I mean, I'm looking forward to this game. This is going to be. This should be Westerns let loose. Let's play ball. Let's yeah, just be. see how much we can score. Let's let the offense and the defense go at it. You know, just let's go to town. Um, UTEP's quarterback, Ryan Metz, is out for, quote, several weeks with a shoulder injury. So he's going to be out for the season probably. Yeah, dude, Um, Conference USA is beat up right now. Between MTSU having, like, every power player out for half the season, this guy going out, it's kind of wild. You know, that's college football, though. That's That's true. I mean— it sounds bad, but everybody can sit and play Madden, and nobody gets hurt when you're playing the game. Right. But when you're actually in a college football environment and people are <laughs> getting hurt, that's part of the strategy, is being able to replace that person with somebody that's good enough or that can fill the role of your offense or defensive needs. Yeah, that's definitely something, though, that you like when, you know, if, if Jalen Hurt at Alabama goes down, you think, okay. Whoever their backup is, it's probably all right. Or the defense is going to be good <laughs> enough to carry. Like, their third-string defensive tackle is still a, probably a second-round NFL pick, whereas our third-string defensive tackle is not going to go to the NFL. Their third-string offensive or defensive tackle could probably start for us, and we would be fine. Oh, yeah, he would probably be our best defensive tackle. I mean, Exactly. Um, but, you know, what we were talking about with UTEP, I mean – and just the conference USA in general. I mean, that's part of it. You got to take the injuries as they come at you. Um, even Western has Jalen Madden. Uh, he's a registered freshman defensive tackle for us, who's out for the season with a knee injury. Um, he got hurt. What was that in the Ball State game? Is that right? I don't know. You've got it against um, EKU, but I can't remember. Well, he oh, no, started, he started his first start DKU was and got his hurt first start State. was against DKU. Gotcha. Um, looks like Jeremy Devin is going to see some more playing time with uh, uh, Jalen Madden's absence. But, yeah, I heard Sam you know. talking about how it was going to hurt the depth, but not really that he wasn't really a starter. Uh, yeah. Every game, but it was just really going to hurt our depth. As far as which sucks. When I was uh, helping with football, well, when I was helping with football, a lot of the guys on defensive line would rotate in and out and you know they get so many plays here so many plays there yeah uh so many series or whatever so uh but <laughs> another uh, bad thing for uh for utep uh they lost their offensive coordinator two weeks ago he was let go brent peace um so let's see they lost their head coach their offensive coordinator starting quarterback 
Um, now let me go down their the, hope, their faith, their know, spirit. Yes, yes, it's basically broke. Um, now let me go down their stats here real quick. I know a lot of y'all are going to go to sleep, but that's okay. Uh, like that. WKU has allowed has more points per game than UTEP. We're at twenty three point three. UTEP is at fourteen point four. That's their points per game. Total yards, Western sits at 336.5, UTEP is 220.6. Now, a lot of those yards came from Ryan Metz. Uh, WKU has allowed 361.8 yards. Now, that's against us. That's our defense. UTEP has allowed 501.8, so that's 502 yards. Dude, they let Rice that get 500 is yards awful. on them. They let Rice put 500 oh yards on them. Oh, my gosh. Rice. That, is just, that just blows me away. And if Rice put 500 yards on them, what is Rice's record anyway? I don't know. Any idea? Bad. Do we play them? Uh, I th- Do we I have them this year? We played Let's them see. last year. They're in the West. We should have them. No, we don't have them this year. Okay. Um, I'm going to look up Rice's record say, yeah, real quick. Because I would like to know. They're 1-4 and four right now. Which is okay. hilarious. They're 1-4. That's that's Rice third. is 1-4? Yeah, Rice is 1-4. And, and they're third... In the West right now, at one and four, oh my because gosh. they beat UTEP. That's their only win. They lost oh to Stanford gosh. sixty-two to yeah. seven. They beat UTEP thirty-one fourteen. They lost to Houston thirty-eight to three. Hell, FIU beat them thirteen to seven. Yeah. And Pittsburgh pounded them forty-two to ten. Well, yeah, and that's Pittsburgh too. They're 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 not. I'd say they're a step up from Conference USA. Um, I mean, yeah, they're a halfway decent ACC school. But Army is going to beat them. Army's got them this week. Yeah, and Army's, Army's going to be good. UTSA is going to smoke uh, them. Who is TSA? UTSA. They're going to. Well, who's? Uh, well, I didn't think they were screeners at airports, but. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? Yeah, who is TSA? Those people that fondle you at the airport. Uh, yeah, UTSA is pretty good this year, man. They're. I, I think they're going to win the West. They. They've come out and looked think... really good. They made. Yeah. Hey, that'd be fun. Um, they got Law Tech coming up on the twenty eighth. UAB. I thought UAB got rid of their football team. Did they uh, not? They, this is their first year. It's called back. It's called the return. Uh, uh, there was such a groundswell from their fan base and from Birmingham to bring back the uh, to bring back the team that they they brought them back and they're they're not terrible this year. Uh, they're I want to say they're leading the conference in uh, attendance as well, which makes I, sense, right? Because well, I mean, if your fans want it back, then <laughs> they kind of right. need to show up. Oh, they, um, I think their first game back, they had like 40,000 people in the stands. It was crazy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'll tell, tell you somebody who I'm watching out for is Old Dominion. Yeah, they yeah. actually might not be too bad this year. They've still got those two running backs, right? Uh, as far as I can tell, they do. Looks like they, the only two games they've lost is to North Carolina and Virginia Tech. Well, that's they beat no UMass, which I'm sure – yeah, there's, 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 that's pretty good. And Albi, I'm guessing that's. You mean Albany? I don't know. Who Al- it just... says Albi. Okay, so you, you're just seeing the a- abbreviation. Yes, it's. Yeah, it's it's Albany. University of Albany. Yes, it's the abbreviation. Oh yeah. Got a nice little music commercial going. I know I shut that off. Anyway. <laughs> Party foul. I don't know who's saying that, so I don't know who to give credit to. So. That's right. It wasn't Whatever. three seconds. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. We'll just do three second clips. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you know, I, as, let me get back on track here because I'm kind of going off in right field. Uh, but UTEP, I think, is going to be uh, Westerns this week and next week should be Westerns' chance to just relax, play football, enjoy the game. You know, it's not. There shouldn't be a lot of pressure on them to compete. You got to win this week. You know, blah blah blah. Just go out, enjoy the game, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I don't necessarily know, you know, I think we're going to win. We're an 18-point favorite. I'm not sure this team can outscore anyone by 18 points that plays Division One football. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm still not sold on that yet. Uh, but, you know, I do think we'll win and win comfortably. I, I don't know. Surely to God it'll get bet down. I just think the people that are betting on Western – that all these guys haven't watched Western play this year. That's my number one thing. Every We've come in as favorites at every single game, and it's just like, well, why isn't Western covering this bet? Because it's not the same team. Like, Forrest yes. Lamp ain't walking through that door. But, yeah, I think and we're going to And Taylor's game. not walking through that door. God, if uh, only but, yeah, I agree. Dog, dang it. Yeah, right. Oh, speaking of professional football players, 
I don't think Bobby Rainey is in the is professional anymore. Did they drop him? Did they cut him again? I think he I think he either got cut or he um he's on the practice team. Well, that could because I, I, mean, I, I looked on the I saw team. an article by Chad Yeah, I saw an article uh by Chad Bishop the other day and it it didn't name Bobby and I thought well maybe he just missed it. Well then he did another one and he didn't name Bobby again. And I thought well that's not right. So no, I actually, actually did a little research, and I was like, "All right." So maybe he's yeah, going to be activated. Yeah. So I looked him up, and yeah, he got he got a cut, looks like. But you know, it's all part of the league. Ah, right, well, he got some money for a while. No big deal. I mean, he's been in the league since uh, about seven years now, six years, seven years, something like that. Yeah. I mean, he, he got paid, so. So that's hey, you know, that's good money. Hopefully, he uh, prepared. Hopefully. Uh, so what are what are you going to put your prediction at this week? Okay, well, what I'll let you... you go first. Okay, so I, I, in your, so I I honestly think that Western probably wins by two touchdowns. So let's say thirty-five to twenty-one. All right, it's recorded. So Jake's predictions are written down. So next week we'll know. Uh, my prediction. I actually said that I kind of give UTEP some credit here. Uh, I said they were going to score 18. Uh, I said Western's going to score 45. So 45 to 18, WKU. Um, I'm not going to be negative. I should, I guess. Maybe I should be negative and we'll beat the snock, socks off of them. Right, like last week? Uh, but, yeah, hey, I'm fine with that. There's a question. Um, Let's, how did you get to 18 points? How did I get to 18 points? Um, actually, after I thought about it, I thought, you know what? They're probably not going to get to 18, but I already wrote it down. So well, I'm no, like, I just, I'm just like scoring 18 in football. <laughs> like, there's a safety in there somewhere. No, they're missing field goals. They're missing field goals or missing score, extra points. Well, they could score. Um, they could kick six field goals. That would be. We funny. could keep them out, but you know, that would be kick, so funny. That would be awesome. <laughs> I now hope that's the score. I hope they score 18 points kicking field goals. <laughs> Be, be oh, like dude, what Steve Spur- Spurrier said uh, back back in the day. I got a hell of a kicker. That's right. God, I miss Steve Spurrier. That was a hell of a punter. Yeah, a hell of a punter is what he called it. You got anything? What, do you, what, about, what do you think about UK? Hell, they got a hell of a punter. That's right. So you want to talk a little... <laughs> For those of you who can't see right now, Devin is eating the hell out of some Skittles. <laughs> So that's what all this silence is, is, is he's, yeah, muted, thanks, he's muted it, and he's just <laughs> nomming the hell out of a bag of Skittles <laughs> that some crazy old woman sold him mm-hmm. at a Walgreens. That's what's happening right now. That's why he can't tell you about Western right. history. That's what those crazy. So, yes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was trying to chomp these down real quick. And hoping Jake would fill for me for a little bit, but I guess I that's did. not going to happen. I was, I was funny. <laughs> I, I told people what you were doing, and it's funny. Okay, don't it's blame me you. for getting guilty by an old lady at Walgreens, okay? That's true. Listen, if a, if a mystical old woman offers you Skittles, you take them every time. That's just, that's just the laws of the universe. It's just how it works. As long as it's still in the Skittles bag, I'm okay. Well, it's hey, man, not they... in a Ziploc bag or something. So. Oh, God, yeah. Don't do not do a Ziploc bag. <laughs> oh, that's, that's all bad. It's the damp Ziploc bag. I don't know what this is. Please get it away from me. There's M&Ms in there, too, honey. Oh, you terrible human. <laughs> oh, God, yes. You never mix those. What is wrong with you? I have put those in a bowl for people before, like at parties. That's it's, evil. It's, that's it is the evil. funniest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> You haven't seen funny until you've seen somebody expecting to get an M&M and get a handful of Skittles and just be like, what in the hell? What have the you worst, done? The worst thing is if you take a bag of Skittles and you mix in those sour ones or the fire ones and then M&Ms on top of that, that's evil. See, it's a good call. Have you ever had the fire ones? I didn't even know the fire ones, but they coated have them in kerosene? The no. They're no, 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 no. They're not like tamales. Oh. Yeah, okay. well, they got, they got like a sweet taste. It's sweet, and then you kind of bite into it, and then it's got the heat, and it's like, oh, okay. I'm a heat lover, so it's kind of good. I liked it. I'm not a big okay. spicy candy fan. All right, now for us old timers here, we're going to talk WKU history. Back in this day, um, okay, uh, back God. in. I'll quit the voice. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, now, when you think big red. You think WKU. 
forever. Most, unless you unless you live in Italy. Um, but Big Red has not been the mascot that long. He's only been the mascot for about 38 years, on my guess. Uh, prior to 1979's basketball season, the uh, mascot was a dude in a red tux wearing a hat and carrying a cane named Mr. Hilltopper. That is the most generic actually, one ever. Yeah, that's like the laziest mascot you could ever come up with. Um, so, And I've actually heard that he wore stilts, too. Like that makes it I a little better. Any, uh, it just makes, that it, makes it creepier. It's like, like a western theme. It makes Slender it Man. sadder. It's sadder. It's like, and I, I actually think I saw pictures my boss showed me where he was um, on stilts with a red and white striped suit. Yeah, it was just weird. Um, That's so weird. And then uh, we had Mister Hilltopper, and then we had another guy who wore a skin, uh, a coonskin cap, just like old Daniel Boone used to wear. And he was Mr. Hilltopper, I think, as well. Uh, but nobody really liked him, and the fan base really needed something else. So uh, Gary Ransdell and another young man both went to the um, went together, and I think he was a senior. Is that correct? I don't want to tell you everybody really, wrong I, here. I didn't know that Ransdell. I didn't know that uh, Ransdell was involved. He was. Yes, he was. Um, they actually did an interview with him a few years back, um, and he was actually working on campus. He was um, – come on now. Okay. Um, Ransdell was still working on campus at the time, and him and uh, – Oh, you're right. Guys, yeah, the guy's name is Kerry. Kerry and Daniel Zacharias. Which is, uh, they, they yes. took, they, well, Gary Ransdell, others, and Kerry, who's a senior from Cincinnati, I'm on there. Yes, okay, their, yes, yes, yes. Gary, Gary Ransdell was the assistant director of Alumni Affairs. Oh. And one of his buddies named Ron Beck, who was the assistant dean of students, uh, they had uh, the coach at the time, uh, Gary, Ken, Gary, Gene, I'm sorry, not Gary, Gene Keedy, uh, challenged those two to come up with a mascot. And they uh, went and started talking to Ralph Carey. Apparently, a senior from Cincinnati Ralph was asked Carey. to draw designs go. for the school mascot, and that's what he came up with. He Which... came up with Big Red. He actually worked at Kings Island. Yeah, so that's what I'm reading. That kind of helped out. Yeah. Okay, you're reading along too. All right. Yeah, good job. I am. Uh... Go WKU Herald. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, Big Red uh, actually was introduced to the world on December 1st, 1979 at the first home basketball game. Santa Claus, of all people, stood at center court and uh, told WKU fans that he had an early Christmas present for them. And they pushed out this giant six-foot white box wrapped up to center court and out jumps Big Red. Dude, I wish they had video. And the rest is history. Actually, I do have a picture of Big Red. And I will put it on the video uh, once we get it uploaded. But he is, yes, it is very sad. It is not the Big Red we know and love today. Well, um, you know, it was 1979. Well, he doesn't have the nice jelly bowl, and his head is not like this nice grimace-looking thing. It's like if... If Big Red lost about 100 pounds Yeah, Big Red had gastric bypass, and that's what happened. Well, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Well, his diet of basketballs and footballs now has supplemented that, so we're good, you know? Sorority girls, skulls, it's all great. (laughs) Yeah, sorority girls, skulls. Uh, Actually, the mascots now, I give them a lot of props. They, It's hot in those suits, okay? Um, Why don't they have, the like, the NASCAR part... cooling systems? That's what I'm screaming, man. Because we're at Western. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Luckily for those guys, they can go in at halftime for a couple minutes and get a break. Um, funny story. <laughs> when I was at Western, when I worked for on the uh, for the athletic training department, we had a uh, big rig get hurt in a football game. Your mic is terrible right he now. He was... Uh, there we go. Do, can you hear me now? Yeah, your mic was buried in your shirt, I think. Okay, sorry. When I worked with the uh, WKU athletic department, we um, we had a big red get hurt uh, during a football a home football game, and uh, of course we all have headsets. And if you notice during the games, you'll see some of the people with water. They'll have the little Secret Service headset. Right. I was one of those guys. Uh, so they came across the radio, 
and said that Big Red was hurt <laughs> and I needed down. to go Big check Red on down. him. So, so he can't talk in front of people. Okay, it's kind of a right, rule. Right. Can't break character. So I'm asking Big Red, what's wrong? And he's grabbing his knee. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm never going to find out what's wrong, what he did to his knee. So Get the uh, gator. Get we the get gator. Him, well, we get him over to the side, and I'm, t- I'm talking to him. And I can't hear what he's saying over the crowd, so I literally have to stick my head inside of Big, Big, <laughs> Big Red's mouth. And he's telling me that he hit a step wrong. He was doing something like dancing or something, and he hit a step wrong, and he felt a pop. Oh god! So Big Red literally tore his ACL his during ACL. a football game. <laughs> Big Red's I, battle scars. Yes. So uh, Big Red actually had to go out that game, and uh, it, I, I don't know if they had a replacement there in time, but it, <laughs> funny stuff, you know. That's fantastic. Big Red blue ACL. Man. I just can't imagine some of these kids watching from the side. They're like, "Hey, look, Big Red." Oh my God, he's trying to eat that guy's head. <laughs> well, that's what I told. I tell people that I, you know, bring to games or that I'm introducing them to Western stuff. I was like, listen, if Big Red comes up to you and tries to nom your head, don't be upset. <laughs> he just likes you. <laughs> Chill out. Everything is fine. Just get a picture. It'll all be great. And get him to do the belly jiggle. Oh yes. Well, I, every time I ever see Big Red, I always give him a high five. Um, let me tell you, those guys work hard. Seriously, and they earn no. their money. Oh my gosh! Basketball season may not be as bad, but football season. Oh, oh gosh! Especially like September football games. Oh, yes, like ninety degrees, and they're out there in those the suits. Absolute. Oh, no, thank you. Right, well, um, I think that's. Now, is that all we got today? Yeah, that's that's it. It's kind of a short show. Um, nah, that's a bye week. Problem, my only problem I have is: is there anywhere to watch this game? Okay, so I don't know yet. It may be on Twitter, uh, on Stadium. I'm not sure if it is. Uh, From what but... I saw, it's on Conference USA TV. Okay, I think that's a pay uh, service. Yeah, I, was I will say, say that the that on game day, if you follow the towel rack, they will they always do a really good job of putting together um, a list of game day facts so that people stop harassing Chad Bishop and Brad Stevens on game day. Asking, tweeting, and calling reporters, the beat reporters for Western, asking how to watch the game. Let the blogosphere deal with that. So I, we always retweet that. Uh, if it is Conference USA TV, I think that's a pay service. I don't think it's free, but I I might be. No, wrong. it's not. No, it's not free. Um, oh, good. From what I saw, you can watch it for like twenty four hours for like seven dollars or something, and it's like, ugh. Well, that, I mean, that's like a ticket, but... <laughs> it also, I, you know, that might be a radio. That might be a Hilltopper uh, ING Sports Network for me. They Yeah, they do have it on there, I know. So, they do a good job. Yeah, it's a late game for us on the East Coast. Uh, it looks like 8. So, be and, fun. Well, it'll, it should be a quick game. I mean, ideally it should be a quick game. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure Sanford should let the clock run and let the boys go. So, hopefully we'll see. Here's here's hoping for a win. This would be a devastating loss. All right, hey, let's uh, let's look for our next player of the game. Congratulations to the past winners. That was Winner. awesome. <laughs> I love it. Hey, love it, guys. Um, <laughs> appreciate all the retweets and the likes on the tweet. That was great. Uh, uh, all of uh, loved especially it. Moses' family. That was pretty. That was pretty awesome. They were they were very appreciative of our award, <laughs> which. Was great. Doesn't mean diddly. I'm sorry, buddy. It doesn't. You played great. Um, maybe at some point we'll get some uh, certificates mailed out we'll, to guys we'll or something. Send, we'll, but, maybe maybe by the end of the season we'll scrape together and get like a really crappy bowling trophy or something. It, it'll be awesome. It'll, it'll be fun. Yeah, and have nothing to do with football on the top. Not a lick. So, not a lick. Not we'll a put lick. your name on it. Yep. Hey, <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, our show lasted tonight longer than Rick did. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yep. <laughs> It's a lot longer than 15 seconds, buddy. That's uh, right. So, you know, <laughs> hey, when Rick goes, all those jokes go too. So we might as well get him in while we can. That's right. It's going to miss Ricky P. Theater, man. So just a reminder, let's pray for the people in Puerto Rico yeah, and uh, right. also the victims in uh, Las Vegas and their families. Uh, it's a horrible thing that happened, and let's just pray for them and their time of need. Agreed. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for listening, for tuning in. Uh, 
we will try we will come back we'll try to get this posted asap and we'll come back next week with another podcast hopefully with a wku victory thanks for listening